Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Ramesh Kaipa. I am an associate professor and uh, head of the Department of Communication Sciences and Disorders at OSU. And that's an interesting story. I know I wanted to work in healthcare for a long time. I wanted to be a medical doctor or a dentist. But then one day my mom and also my dad suggested, have you heard something called a speech and hearing? And I was like, no. And they were like, you gotta try it out. You may like it. So I, uh, I go into this major uh, thinking, I don't know what I'm doing here. But after one month of classes, I was so switched on and I knew this was the major for me. And uh, here I am 20 years later, I think that day the decision I made was the best decision I've made ever. So the technical name for the area of my expertise is neurogenic communication disorders. What that means is I uh, uh, specialize in evaluating and treating people with speech disorders subsequent to neurological illness like uh, Parkinson's disease, for example, road traffic accident, or any brain injury for that matter. The best part of my career is being in a classroom or being in a clinic. When I see the students' eyes and they lit up and they comment, oh, that's how the brain works or that's how we communicate, that makes my day because I know communication is a very powerful tool. And to understand how the entire process works is just amazing. It's a very good experience. So to know students learn about speech or how to treat a person with communication disorders is a very gratifying experience. Um, I would say the clients, um, while I also don't see clients actively day in and out, I um, do research that involves many clients with communication disorders. So it's just knowing that some of the research that I'm involved with will benefit uh, people with communication disorders is the best part. You can never go wrong with choosing uh, communication sciences and disorders as a profession. Because speech language pathology is ranked by US News to be the number three best job among the 100 health carriers and audiology is ranked to be number 22. Um, so it's very gratifying and uh, a person in, you know, working in the area of communication sciences and disorders ends up working until he or she retires. Uh, so the nine, there's 97 to 98 percentage of retention rate in this profession. Um, so as like I would call it often, it's very gratifying. I hope you would take up this career. My research deals with uh, designing evidence-based treatment, behavioral treatments for people with neurogenic communication disorders. So that involves incorporating technology, behavioral treatment, uh, measuring how they communicate before the treatment begins and comparing how they communicate after the treatment begins. So most of my research focuses on pre and post treatment design. Um, and I got to tell you that um, our treatments do work. You know, there is ample evidence to demonstrate that. Um, and that's why we are strong as a profession. Um, again, I go back to my uh, previous experience during, you know, as a uh, grad clinician. I noticed that most of the techniques we use need to be constantly updated. You know, there has to be research. For example, you go to a physician and he gives you an outdated drug. You know, you gotta ask uh, yourself, how would I feel? So like that, our clients deserve to receive the state-of-the-art treatment, uh, the current treatment, and that's not gonna happen unless we research or we generate research and pass it on to practicing clinician. So I saw that 20 years ago, that was not happening as frequently as I would have liked it to, and that's what motivated to be a clinical researcher. Currently, I am directing uh, four uh, graduate theses and I also have an undergraduate student uh, she's been working with me for the last year and a half. Um, they are all very passionate and I love to work with you know, my students. Um, they enjoy the process of research and also they get to know how research you know, is passed along to the practicing clinicians. We have actually quite a few freshmen uh, who are participating um, in our research and, and they are just phenomenal. You know, they come in with all these ideas, they are very motivated and I think they just make, uh, you know, perfect environment 
uh, for the research to happen in our programs. They can actually see what this profession is all about. They don't have to commute 30 minutes or they don't have to go Tulsa or Oklahoma City. So they get to see uh, the action in progress. They get to see how patients are being evaluated, how they are being treated. Uh, they get a 360 degree perspective on what exactly speech language pathology and audiology is about and they are very appreciative of that experience.